complexities turn to ban. Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. Dire team pick. Aladdin. Complexities turn to pick. Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. Shadow Fiend! Complexities turn to pick. Dazzle! Dire team pick. Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. Reserve time. Warlock. Complexities turn to ban. Ten seconds remaining. Uh, from yesterday's mistakes, Abaddon and Warlock, that's a lot of heal, that's a lot of sustaining team fights. So is Dazzle as well. I'm surprised actually that uh, teams uh, still leave Coral in, uh, in a pool. We saw the last game, I mean that hero is just uh, broken. Yeah, I mean, we'll see occasionally though, because just sometimes teams, they want some of those juicy, sweet picks. So you might just throw out some casual, usually second wave bands to get something in there. Uh, this time though, it's 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 very obvious the Coddle is like a, is a huge, huge uh, factor in a lot of Onyx's success, so. I think uh, Abaddon won every remain. single game that he's been in. Well, was it Grant before said Five there was a stat? Remaining. Abaddon plus Magnus, I guess, has won every game. I wouldn't be surprised if, in general, yeah, the Abaddon win uh, rate is very high. I think he said Warlock uh, oh, plus Warlock. Magnus. Oh, hey, hey, hey! We got a Warlock here. We got a Magnus available. Ult was pretty good on the hero. Hmm. I hope it's uh, just not a uh, Magnus forest that dies to creeps. Yeah, Mike. That's... Uh... Yeah, Mikey boy, that didn't yeah. work out well. Yeah. It, it unfortunately led to some repercussions where uh, you know the bottom lane suffered a bit, Five and that meant the mid lane remaining. also didn't get help. We'll uh, see if Onyx, uh, if they were deciding to go down that road, would consider you know options and being able to still have strong lanes there. So now the Darkseer band going to be coming out here, Onyx's side. Shadow Fiend here for 747. I gotta say, that already seems a bit scary. He is very, very good. Mr. Eric Ten Dong on the, the Shadow Fiend. So, Onyx have a draft ahead of him. Do you be able to work out Five something to match up against remain. the Shadow Fiend? But uh, they don't feel confident to show that card right away. Yeah, they don't have to rush. Uh, Onyx might still go for Earth Spirit. Uh, uh, when you see a Shadow Fiend, you just want to pick Earth Spirit, uh, so you bully him. That's true. Uh, Ogre is gone. Because uh, Complexity didn't want to play against that hero because it creates so much space for the mid laner. We saw how good it is uh, when uh, Abed was playing Invoker against, uh, what was it, Ember Spirit. Mm -hmm. And Ogre just came, it was just devastating for Ember. Couldn't get back into the game, even with the Empower. I still expect to see a Magnus on, uh, on Team Onyx, actually. Yeah, that would be pretty nice to have, again, with that Fatal Bonds. Curious about the Z Freak hero now. Pretty apparent that Swindles is going to be playing this Dazzle, but we always like to see Z Freak if he's not playing those defensive supports, like let's say his Wisp or 
you know, of the such, you know, he, he also likes to go that very aggressive road. We might even see him go for the Earth Spirits, or uh, he used to play a lot of Kunkka. Brewmaster Whoa. coming out now. Now, the last time they played this Brewmaster Lacoste, wasn't it 747 playing it in the mid lane? Yeah, it was. 747 is apparently playing Shadow Fiend in this game, so something's up. Yeah, it needs to be an offlane Brewmaster, no doubt about it. We, I mean, remaining. practically you can put Brewmaster in, in a safe lane, but uh, to remaining. like go for mana boots into Blink Dagger or around 9 oh, 10 minute mark, uh, but. Uh, the hero Complexity does what he does, so you can put him on an offlane. Good call, by the way, on the Earth Spirit. Uh, Shadow Fiend is all, obviously a supple, sweet target for an Earth Spirit to kind of mess around with. This may force the Dazzle to kind of be chained to the side of the Shadow Fiend a bit in the landing phase. Ten Otherwise, they're going to have to get something to just help him out a bit. Or something to punish Five one of the other lanes remaining. and make Earth Spirit just kind of ha be at attendance there. Not be pressuring the shadow feed. Yeah. Complexity banned uh, Meepo. We saw how a bad excels on that hero. Last game he had uh, dra what Dragonlance power threads, blink dagger, nine minutes. Yeah. I, I don't think that's possible. What do you say? Uh, it's ridiculous. The the guy had been not even playing the hero much of the qualifiers at all. I don't even know if there was a game, maybe one we might have missed, but it was clearly something that I don't even think MP were prepared to suddenly uh, be witness to. But it looked like Abed hadn't missed a day playing the hero. He even got a rampage that game. It was really something else. Uh, I would expect complexity. If any draft seems to have a hole or an opportunity for a Meepo, they will give it. Uh, the ban necessary. That was just an easy, probably wake up call disruptor. for complexity. That previous series, uh, previous series. Dial okay, team. disruptor comes out. Uh, a disruptor dazzle duo here. Um, it's nice. They have a, a whole toolkit of defensive tools to work with on dazzle side. You have great crowd control and silence with disruptor, but. I would be a little concerned that these are not supports that get proactive in the early game remaining. at all. They're not move, moving lanes and ganking people. Yeah, that, that is correct. Disruptor, kind of more remaining. mobile than Dazzle, but uh, pretty much they, they do the same thing on the lane. Harass, uh, just time. protect your carry. Uh, you know what uh, Team Onyx might pick? Uh, it's going to be for mid either uh, Invoker or um, maybe an Alchemist. Invoker or Alchemist? We, we, yesterday we saw some Alchemist Abaddon uh, Vorlock combo. It's um, it's so strong. You, you you don't need to go heal. If you take those uh, tier 1, tier 2 towers pretty early, your heroes have so much gold and you can just sit and chop some HP on tier 3 towers. What about just picking up a classic little jug or something like that? You get even more heal stuff? Mason's shown some Yeah, decent you can still skill. do that. You can have both of them, actually. Yeah. Uh, the, uh, Onyx banned the uh, Dark Seer, so I assume they want to have a uh, safe lane melee carry. That's why they banned it. There was no Weaver. no combo. All Mason right. Weaver. Complexity out here. Into bad. a disruptor. Normally, I would say disruptor is very nice to have when you're going against a Weaver. In this kind of case, uh, obviously, once it gets the Lincolns, it's not going to be as easy to contain it with glimpse. But up to that point. You, know, you have a way to kind of lock down the little bugger and even back. use that stack storm to prevent any uh, comeback time lapses. So, I guess they're feeling, uh, they're picking just the uh, heroes they're comfortable with. So Weaver, really a Mason's hero, plays it so well. Ten seconds remaining. This, this game he will need to go for Lincoln Sphere because of the Five glimpse and the uh, pandas. Um, I always forget what that spell is called. Tornado, or tornado, or yeah. I just call it tornado. I don't know if it has a proper name. <laughs> uh, well, I'm curious then if the uh, final pickup here from from Onyx is going to have any extra bit of synergy or influence to go along with this Weaver here. But uh, up until that point, we've see the Tinker ban, singly enough from Complexity. Well, they don't have much against Tinker. It's only Disruptor with uh, Shadowfin being on mid and Dirt Spirit Tinker. Yeah. And he can get destroyed in the lane pretty easily. Alright, they ban out the axe here. That makes me think that... I was going to say Jug, normally pretty nice to yeah, have, but... you know, but they already got the Weaver. Unless they want to run mid lane Jug against Shadowfin? Still doable. Later on, hard to play Jug against Shadowfin because Shadowfin just double raises the creep wave. 
Ember Spirit. Of course. The Abed double Ember spirit. spirit. The double spirit strat. <laughs> With the uh, Warlock Kicker. Um, they banned X. Uh, X is an offlane hero, so they might actually think what I mentioned uh, that Brewmaster might be played uh, as by a Z safe Freak? lane. Oh, remaining. safe lane. Oh, yeah. by Moo. Yeah, 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 yeah. In fact, Five if I'm not mistaken, remaining. I want to say that on his time with Digital Chaos, there may have been a Moo offlane Brew Reserve appearance time. here or there. If, I want to say that I've seen Moo play this hero occasionally. I, I prefer it as an offlane hero. Uh huh. Well, we'll have to see if uh, that is going to be the case or Ten not here. Remaining. Five Outside of that, remaining. maybe Ursa wanting order. to go for the extra control, but it is going to be the Ursa pickup. That means it is going to be uh, the offlane brew. Yeah. So uh, against Weaver, they don't have much control besides Disruptor and that... Uh... Cyclone spell from <laughs> Brewmaster. <laughs> Tornado, you said. Feels pretty high tempo here from Complexity. This is not a lineup you probably want to be pushing into the later game against Onyx. Uh, Warlock could even bring in a lot of farm on top of obviously the Ember and Weaver who pull out significant late game. Uh, Ur Ursa picked uh, last uh, against Abaddon. Uh, we saw pretty much a bad in every single game in NA, and uh, Ursa works so well against him, even if you shield, and uh, with that Earth Shock, maybe even having at least Ten two levels so remaining. he can't run away with the Disruptor or Dazzle, it's uh, pretty easy to kill him. Uh, one of those two supports, Dazzle or Disruptor, will have to focus in the early stages on mid, because uh, Shadowfind uh, is not that strong, especially against Ember Spirit, who's going to have a poor man's shield, probably, and Earth Spirit rotating on mid. It'll probably be the Dazzle. The Disruptor could do okay in the, the safe lane to help things out between him and the Ursa. You have that glimpse. You could chase down the Abaddon and pull him back and away from the safety of his tower. And with Kinetic Field, you might be able to get a, a nice little bit of lockdown. But as we know, this is just a... Uh, matchup Bulba's been used to. He's been playing the offlane of Adam, like pretty much this whole qualifier run so far, and uh, something I'm sure he's going to be ready to and ready to kind of engage with. We will lead him with an early pause, but this is it, man. America Finals! Let's go, baby! Let's go, man. One best of three here, and one team will move on to go to Kiev to represent for those who America. Don't, yeah. For those who don't know, this is the sixth game for Onyx in a row, actually, today. Yep. Played a full three-game stretch with Freedom to start off their day, moved on in that two-game series against NP just earlier, and now we'll begin a new chapter. Their finals matchup against Complexity. Complexity, they have been around their share of qualifier finals, both making it into lands and, of course, just barely making it out and being that gatekeeper kind of a team. Here, they have rightfully earned their spot in the grand finals, working their way through that upper bracket and even taking down MP in that winner bracket final. A very tight series there. So this one ends up feeling a bit close. You have one team, an Onyx, really warmed up, really feeling themselves today, and Complexity, who've been kind of watching as spectators, taking in all that information and preparing for this the series right here. Yeah, now. this is it. This is what everybody w was waiting for in NA. Uh, Dubu placed a deep uh, ward inside enemy forest. We'll see if Melons finds out. There's one sentry to deward it. Uh, it's being pinged out actually near it. Uh... Very uh, intriguing spot. Not something you would normally uh, expect to kind of see a ward pop up. So I am very curious to see if they're going to be able to find it. More traditional spot, maybe right over here. Swindle was already kind of in that area, ready to go, but let's see if Onyx are actually curious about rolling in and contesting this. Their level 1 fight is pretty fair. Ubu is actually getting ready to head across the river now and begin to head up. Yeah, they're going in, but 7 seconds, 5, they're going to get it. Yeah, it looks like they will have the advantage in numbers on this one and be able to snag that up, while up and above... Monkeys will be able to creep in and just grab up the bounty rune right in front of Mr. Harry Potter. Okay, so Ursa running top. Oh, we're having they a change. They want to swap. Yeah, it's yeah. Uh, it's uh, actually a tri lane on bottom for Onyx. I want to see the mid matchup. Okay, there, there's the dazzle I was talking about. He's already harassing a bed. Uh, Shadowfin uh, kind of destroys the lane after he gets uh, level 3. Oh! oh no! 
Oh, what a misplay there! Abed brings the courier so close, he knew Z Freak was on that side, but just, I guess, didn't realize he was going to be able to get those kind of shots in. Courier goes down nice and early here. Big start for Cole. Beaver tipping top already. They want to swap the lanes, so they don't want to have a bad end against Solo Urza. Go straight up to the top lane now as Onyx are also making their appropriate adjustments. Bulba did the bottom now. We'll join Demon in the meantime here. So they're back and forth. We'll see if Cole will feel the need to respond once again or if they'll just settle with the way things are. I want to see if Ursa wants to DP. Probably should. And for now, just kind of hanging here. Demon will be nearby, but he got that pull in. And this is where it gets a bit awkward for move. He's not able to kind of get a part of the creep wave here. Abed and Z-Freak kind of up in arms. Z-Freak just happy for the attention to be drawn his way so that 747 can continue to have a wonderful start. He's at 9-3 CS already. Someone taping. Panda yeah. is on top again. Another changeup in order here for Cole. But as you mentioned, it's necessary. Ursa taping the bottom. Yep. Mind games. Back down we go. <laughs> Do we forecast another change here from Onyx? Uh, <laughs> I think it's been enough. Dubu got that bounty rune, dashes all the way to the other side, and it looks like he'll be able to pick up a second one uh, before walking his way out. That will allow him to get to the level two. That means Boulder Smash is going to be online. Oh, and Warlock double damage. Gank in, but uh, as you can see, below a double damage Warlock here. Oh, Dubu wants to make a move in mid. He's waiting on the high ground. Dazzle is not nearby. Dazzle currently showing himself, I think, a bit in the top lane. Means that the opportunity to make a go could be there. Edelfin just removes his shield with a raise. He's level uh, 3 right now. 15 to 7 CS. That, that's what I was talking about. It's going to be so hard for Ember to actually stand on that lane. He'll uh, step back and hit the showers there a bit with Dubu. And head back into the mid lane at his fortunate disadvantage. Dubu continues to try to maybe set up some openings there onto the Shadow Fiend. It ain't gonna be easy. Boo back at bottom now finds himself going toe to toe with Bulba and getting forced back between Bulba and Demon. I'm surprised uh, Bulba when he plays a Baton, he always goes for that uh, straight phase boot. Uh, again, playing against uh, double lane, at least you should get a stick. If not one, just get a stick. It's not the bubble way, apparently, at least for now. Saw Dubu try to go for an attempted roll onto the mid lane Shadow Fiend, but came yeah. a bit short. And now a trade. As Monkeys is going to eat a hard shot. Mason continues to grind away. What's happening down here? Dubu and Moo going toe to toe. It's Dubu coming out on top and getting connection with that last hit. Yeah, that was nice rotation from Dubu right there. And by the way, who am I to talk about fans to Mr. Harry Potter if he should buy? magic wand or not. Yeah, this man will buy a $300 magic wand, and you have nothing to say about it. Top lane here, Z Free spots out the bounty and actually denies it before Mason can get it. Mason very low, forced to eat that tango and hustle himself himself out. Yeah, Dazzle had a fairy fire ready, so he couldn't man up and fight him. See, he's not too sure if he had that point into grave or whatever it is, he didn't want to hang around too much longer. He breaks steps back and uh, he'll be with monkeys for now. We, we look over the early CS here. It is. Oh, this looks good. Triple shower on the shrine. That feels good, man. That feels real nice, real refreshing here for Onyx now as they take that business to the bottom lane. And for seven, though, 31 and seven is uh, Shadow Fiend in mid lane. Back at bottom, though, a new engagement here from Moo. Dubu leads it off, rolling on in. That kinetic field is not going to be nearly enough of a fence to stop Onyx's momentum here. Another takedown on the Ursa. Both the kills. Cole still, still couldn't find any opening to get a kill. Uh, Panda on top with poor man's shield and Calling Blade doing a good job uh, CSing against Weaver. Pretty even. Yeah, Weaver still kind of trying to find his way. It's more surprising to see yeah, how, how well Monkeys has been kind of holding up here, but he's still got some levels ahead of him before he gets that level 6 and might be able to hit his hand in the action, if you will. Here's beer in your 
So only level four to five. You could even say the same here for Demon, but uh-oh. I look away one moment, and now Monkey's in trouble. Dubu has been putting in the mileage this game, getting all over the map and looking for setups. And here he is able to get it. Yeah, Dubu, yesterday he didn't... Uh... Played at Earth Spirit well, couldn't find any openings, but now the, the guy's really shining too. Zero and three, he's in all three kills so far. Level four at six minutes, almost level five. This is gonna be big. Yeah, this is a bigger spirit start. And uh, one they certainly could have used because it was uh, feeling a little tough there for Abed in the mid lane, and it's nice to have the attention kind of drawn elsewhere. 747 has kind of stepped away in the meantime. Maybe Cole thinking about a round down here towards the bottom. Bulba continues to grind away the farm. He's actually second in CS right now. 36 and sell, uh, 7 for your Abaddon. Heck, he's gonna go for... Hedra's recipe might switch to... Might go for the Dominator, which he prefers, or go for Vladmir's offering. Maybe Vlad's would be a better choice uh, because of Shadowfin's aura. He's a heavy right clicker yeah. and Ursa as well. So he can boost his team with armor. Rune of Invisibility. Alan's pulling down the camp here a bit while Demon still waits. Also on that side. Ooh, a glimpse pullback to catch Bulba under the tower. Nice setup from Melons. Can they fall through with the finish? Yes, they can. Who will be able to pick up that one, but Mason has shown up in time to be able to move on forward, and Doom will be there for the finish. Abed secures both of them with a double kill, and they're looking for more. And they got Sea Freak too. What a beautiful engagement from Onyx there. They rotated everyone, uh, Abed and uh, Mason TP with his Weaver just uh, secured those skills. Uh, that was a really good trade for Onyx. Six to one. It looked like they just showed up out of nowhere. But yeah, rolling in, keeping the attention focused there from Cole. Now Cole is gonna be forced to kind of respond. The monkey's rotating down here to the bottom. Let's have that level six. I bet still hanging out nearby. Swindles has his glimpse up and ready to go. Could pop him with the lightning here. Abed uh, has the remnant. Thinking about maybe possibly turning around, chaining down the brew. Mason going right on in for Melons here. Needs a bit more. He's going to have to kill the bug. Moo has to help him kill it or he's going to die. Woo! He ends up getting bug. killed from the Mason bug. Oh, this is uh, very tough right now for Cole. On their response play, they end up just losing another here. Onyx confidently just kind of farming through their woods. Yeah, Dubu is level 6 at 8 minutes with that's Earth Spirit. That's crazy. Yeah, that's gonna be big. He needs to find an opening for... And he has 6 Radiant stones. Spotlight. They can easily take a fight now and do serious work. Never refuse school, give him. Who is just, uh, strutting right back into those woods nearby. Look at the supports inside of Onyx. Even Demon is a level 6 on top. Mid lane. Wendell shows himself, but I don't think he'll be staying here very long. Oh, swing and a miss on the roll, but he gets the grip. Follow-ups there from Abed, rolling in with the chains, and that will lead to another support takedown. Captain Melon's going to be put again six feet under. And Onyx, the fire continues to burn. A hot start in game number one of our finals. Eight and one already. Looking good. Abed, after that uh, start, when uh, Dazzle was harassing him, he had play from behind, but he's still back in the game, Dyer's 700 uh, below Shadowfin. Uh, in terms of CS, Shadowfin leads, uh, but uh, he's all over the place with Ember Spirit. He's in five kills out of eight. Uh, meanwhile, Shadowfin, 0, zero, zero. I mean, I'm happy for Shadowfin his success in the lane and all the farm has been able to, been able to build up for himself, but uh, you know, eventually 747 is going to have to find a way to beat some ass here. Finds himself with Abed, and here comes Brother Dubu. Rolling forward, gets the stun and the silence. They land him with the magnetize. If he drops one more stone, that should be a guaranteed kill. And I think that's going to do it. He'll slowly tick away and eventually get popped. Abed for the follow-up. And another takedown possibly here. Both Z-Freak and Moo also hit with that magnetize. Z-Freak will be able to get up on the stun. But Mason looking to go for the cleanup. Gets the one. And then time lapses back outside. Almost two kills. Uh, look at the build on Dazzle. He doesn't have any point in Grave. He could have saved uh, Shadowfin there, actually. But he went for two in Poison Touch, which is so greedy. Yeah, well, I guess really expecting for their laner early game to be on the aggressive. And it, that is certainly not the case. They are the team all on defensive here. Ten and one. Now for Onyx. Yeah, Rock still not committed. Oh, they can find the fight again. Uh, Bulba has the Helm of the Dominator completed. Even picks up an Alpha Wolf to boost uh, the 
damage output. This game already looking good. It feels even more one-sided than that game two versus freedom. Someone's dropping the base. Yeah, d -d 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 drop the base. Go demon, go. Thinking about it here, pump faking as he knows he has the watchful eye over Abed. If anything is to come out of here from Cole, looks like not hesitation. Just total dictation here being created from Onyx. Again, Harry Potter wants to go for the Radiance build. <laughs> Is so high level, eight level, almost level nine, and he bought a wand. W what is this wand? Is what kind of wood is it? Mahogany, yeah, yes. Mid lane, Dubu, beautiful connection onto two with the magnetize, and as they try to even attempt to get off the ulti, the rock comes down from above, and Onyx just lay waste to complexity. Seven for seven shows up trying to go for a requiem. He will be able to make it out with the TP, but Onyx still hit, and they hit hard. Again, two for one trade, plus the tower. Panda couldn't get his ulti off. A bed with the Veil of Discord for all that magical damage from Earth Spirit. That That is just gonna be huge in the next 10-15 minutes. Yeah. Alright, Onyx with that advantage. Just still spreading themselves out like we saw in the previous series against NP. And just gobbling up all that farm available. 747 credit to him still holds the highest net worth in the game. For someone who hasn't even gotten one kill yet, that's that's some pretty good farming, I gotta say, but eventually gotta be fighting here, and he actually finds an opening here. Moving in for Abed. Can he get the kill? No. Abed will be able to jump back it away. Mason now. She's away from the trouble. They're that's gonna the get thing. Demon. Up at mid lane, it looks like they spotted Demon with that crazy cyclone spell. Let me check what it's raises. called. Cyclone, yeah. Oh, he is! Okay, he's dead. <laughs> I thought for a moment there, somehow, some way, Oba would have been able to get close enough and then they would have gotten him a help. And they didn't live stone. on. Oh my goodness! FIFA play Adubu connects with the stone from out of left field and cancels out the TP from 747. Oh, they're getting. So much kills, 13 kills for 13 minutes on the side of Onyx. Meanwhile, Dazzle just casually farming top. He has level 8 and medallion plus 500 gold. Rumble's coming home though. Onyx here now in the mid lane, looking to go for the tier 2. No ulti on your brew, but they go for the glimpse back. Whoa! He is gone! What a timing, huh? <laughs> Jesus. Cole can't catch a break, man. Onyx are feeling themselves still. 3 to 13, 6k gold. Roche is there and open, but you know, Onyx don't have the best Roche lineup right now. Maybe once a if the Desolator was to be done here on Mason, but it looks like Mason's gonna be going for a Dragon Lance build up. Yeah, he, he went for power threads first. Uh, usually he skips it. Top tower is under attack. Let's see if he's gonna time walk back. And laps. Oh. Look, uh, Jimmy. Jimmy's so farmed. He has the same amount of farm as Ursa. Is it that he has so much farm, or is that Ursa doesn't really have any farm at yeah, all? Yeah, maybe it's the second one. <laughs> I mean, it's been a tough time for Moo here, put into that situation in the early game when you're hopping from lane to lane just to find any respectable matchup so you can just do your job as a farmer. But, you know, credit to Onyx. They prepared for it and forced Cole into that awkward lane dance. And Dubu, of course, making his presence across all three lanes also made it much more of a headache for Cole. And now with all that farm, all that momentum, Onyx have been kind of punishing Cole with it. Both teams find themselves on each opposite end as uh, Cole are coming down here from the bottom, securing their way through their first tower of the game. In the meantime, it's Onyx who have cleared out uh, one tier two, looking to go for their second. Vanda has a blank dagger. It seems like they want to go for Roche. Let's see if Cole head out that direction. In the meantime, they finally get that tier one. And as you talked about, Onyx are in the pit. And they have enough sustain to actually kill the Roche. I don't know if it's gonna be enough. Yeah, it will be. Oh, They're yeah. not gonna make it. 
They beelined uh, a drawing on the map there from Cole to go right towards the pit, but they are going to be coming in just a bit too late. Almost just late enough where they're going to try to go for a fight when it might be too late all together. Mason's already picked up the Aegis, committing in the brew. He's going to be able to get off the split. Requiem flies out. Moo's going to get hit up with the Magnetize here. After a bit of a reset, they will get Dubu down. The Rock going to get dropped from Demon. Does manage to catch on to two. Z Freak should get blown up, but he does manage to get off the grave. 747 says, I got to go. The chains are not going to be there. So he ends up making it away. Only both supports will go down from the side of Cole, but I may have spoke too soon here for Monkeys. Shows himself over on the side, and he has nowhere to escape here. He's been surrounded now by both Mason and Abed. He'll look to slap the shrine here and delay what, think, what I think is the inevitable. He's just saving that. Wow. 506 Ember, Boots of Travel, 600 gold. There was a huge rock. Dazzle, Dazzle couldn't get uh, close to Grave anyone, so he had to Grave himself. Requiem of Souls really not on point. Meanwhile, Earth Spirit is just controlling Ursa in that game, dying, but uh, yeah, it just... was worth it. You know, uh, an immediate jump in from Monkeys, unfortunately for them, comes at, what, one, two seconds too late to be able to contest the Aegis, but it's so far ahead of his team that, as you talked about, Dubu is able to kind of be that gatekeeper, stop the rest from bull rushing their way in, and at that point, the fight is split apart. If you go into 1v1s on this team, Onyx is going to have you outmatched. This is a 1v2 where it's all Onyx, and they just make quick work of 747 just trying to farm out one of the lanes. He has finally been overtaken as far as king of net worth. Your top three net worth all belong to Onyx. Looking good for Onyx. Uh, with those two spirits, it's so easy to gank. Oh, Mason. Mason. Aegis is gone. Slithers himself into a bit of trouble here. And he's going to be handing over the Aegis probably a bit earlier than they expected. But the chase is on now. Abed looking to make moves. Spots out Swindle. He'll try to send one of them back, but... He already get the kill on the low ground. Stunned up, Z Freak. Dubu just controlling. Uh, yeah. Dazzled from the high ground of its silence, so he can't grave him. Really well played here from Onyx so far. On and oh, I don't know if this is a team I'd be confident to high ground defend with. You have a decent choke point team fight with your disruptor, let's say, but uh, they're just so out far. Yeah, they had to use. Uh, Disruptor's ulti there to actually kill the Weaver, to remove the Aegis, it uh -huh. was only one and a half minute. But still, meanwhile, Mr. Harry Potter. Harry Potter. Look at him. He's a wizard. Gold. 500 gold away. He'll have that magical golden wizard sword. That he always seems to seek. He's gonna cast Lumos with uh, Radiance. It's gonna be so bright, so shiny. We'll have to see uh, what what kind of work they'll be able to get done with it here. The game is already well in their favor before it's even complete. Cole out the other way. Let's see if uh, it's coming to that point here where they have uh, to roll out maybe with some sort of do or die smoke approach here. Shadow and has uh, Dragon Lance and Shadow Blade, which is gonna help him survive a little bit in fights. Maybe. Get some good Requiems. Uh, Earth Spirit has one Sentry Ward. Let's see if Jimmy has anything. Well, Jimmy's just uh, farming my man. Point Booster getting close to Aghanim Scepter. In chase now. It's taking him quite a while to catch up. Might not want to overextend here if you're Cole. He just turns around and says, you want some Dwayne? The Rock Johnson puts it right on their head. Moose says, I'm good. Peace is out in the back of a TP, but that leaves Monkeys here alone. Hey, and his three little bears are going to try their best to split up and avoid the trouble, but Chase is on. Yeah, it's Earth and Fire Spirit against Earth and Fire Spirit, actually. <laughs> That's a wonderful observation here. Can the fake little spirits be able to make it away? Oh, barely. Dubu almost catches him with that boulder smash, but Monkeys does survive. Shadow fans uh, going to BKB. Will he needs to against all these heroes? But what? When Abaddon makes uh, blade mail and just goes in, well, what are you gonna do against that? Illusion. That's a wonderful question. One I may not have the answer to right now. You hope that Dazzle's close enough to get you with the grave. <laughs> yeah. At that point. <laughs> you could survive past that and then just uh, receive sweet healings to be able to come back for round two. Maelstrom finished for Amber Spirit. It seems like he doesn't want to go for a Blink Dagger. Might change his mind. Uh, he got um, sweet. something else queued up, but... 
not easy to change. If it's needed, might be good for chasing, actually. They don't have any chase besides uh, Earth Spirit. Also, getting a Blink Dagger. Yeah. A real surprise there will help guarantee any sort of uh, quick stun initiation. Maybe quick grip silence to cancel out any sort of grave save. Uh oh, Swindle has found himself a little bit of a bug problem. Sends him back, goes to the TP, and does manage to make it away. Yeah. Just in time. He uses the fog of war. And uh, same goes for 747. Doing a nice job splitting and pressuring out one of the lanes so that Onyx can't comfortably just move in for a high ground push. Kind of stalling things out where possible. All, all tier 2 towers are down for complexity. Uh, if uh, Onyx wants to play it safe, they're just gonna take control of the enemy forest, just shut down the map so they can't farm, because you can just stand on the lane with the baton and uh, be so cocky. Uh, and wait for Roche, which is halfway through. This is definitely feeling like a let's farm and wait for Roche and uh, playoff finals kind of a game. <laughs> Where you're not looking to carelessly throw away uh, little trades. The expense of losing uh, the big picture here. Yeah, Ursa finished the Blink Dagger so he can position himself. It's gonna be hard uh, if uh, a Baden is close. You can't blink because of the Radiance. And uh, Link Sphere on Weaver finished. So he can't get Glimpse, he can't get Cyclone by Panda. He, uh, well, Weaver might actually want to cast it on a Baden in a team fight because uh, Panda's primal thing to do in a fight is to actually Cyclone the Baton so they can control it. All uh, move themselves back towards the mid lane here. Dubu's close. Just drops an OBS ward actually right on top of the sentry of Cole there. But they're looking to use this brief bit of vision to take advantage of this opportunity. Moving in, stun silence. On for monkeys, but Onyx are reading the situation as if Cole are all behind them waiting there on the high ground. And they were. They do not dump the gun. They immediately re retreated to Shrine, which is high ground, so easy to fight. They just smoked. Yeah, this is them now hiding to the low ground here. Onyx not looking to give up their own personal high ground positioning here and just walk into the mid lane. It's so tense. Man, you feel it. Oh, wait. Dazzle. Dazzle Weave. They're pinging as if he might be over there, but once they don't see him, they'll quickly realize it may have been a smoke play. Oh, Monkeys goes for the split. Are they thinking about committing on the Bulba here? They glimpse him back, hit him with a kinetic field. Mason thinks about making a move in for Dazzle, gets hit with the Earth Shock. They'll see that the Bear now has a blink and step on back. Meanwhile, committing in considerably was Abed jumping right back out. The Static Storm is not going to find his mark because Abed swiftly jumps out from the trouble. Now they don't have to worry about a Static Storm here. No Static Storm, no Panda ulti, no Requiem. They're just gonna go in right now. Thinking about it here, Bulba though eating a lot of damage. Nice two-man stun silence into the Chaotic Offering from Demon. Right onto the head of Cole. Looking to go for Woo! the finish. They wipe out immediately the Ursa and Dazzle. They're gonna be forced to probably go into a buyback situation here if they want to stay alive. Not a lot of damage on the Tier 3 though. Oh, this fight gave me chills. I'm not even fucking kidding. Check it out. I just see a lot of hair, you crazy Croatian. <laughs> <laughs> Onyx, though, good fight, but yeah, not a lot objectively. Not a lot objectively there. Uh, there was, uh, what, one buyback? One from buyback. Z Freak. They didn't even force out the move buyback. With yeah, it. they have uh, Alpha Wolf in Roche Pit. Is Roche Pit actually a pit? Let's take a look here. I am no geologist or. Uh, oh, I looks know. like a. I don't know, just. Archaeologist or. Lance casual rocks around. Just looks like a Our river. Yeah. Or an island, maybe. Bush Island. Ooh, kick. Space. Jumping back now, Weaver. Catch him with the dust. Dubu rolls away and makes it on a TP. Oh, almost find their chance. They can look, they're looking for another one, but again, it's going to be Bulba in their way. Worst target you could ask for. So they're looking to settle for Demon. But Demon had already dropped the rock. It's not the worst thing ever. Looks back and in. Amber going in. He moves in now. Gets the double change connection. And a remnant forward will quickly wipe Jump. out the two. Boo. Even though he didn't have to commit the buyback in the previous fight, he doesn't have the money for a buyback now. 
Yeah, they even lost the gem there. So Shadow Fin, the Shadow Blade is pretty useless. I mean, he still gives damage, uh, move speed. BKB is finished on Shadow Fin right now. I've never seen a game like this when uh, 747 has not been able to do a whole lot. Still with zero kills in this one. A Static Storm will be dropped to almost zone back Onyx to keep him out from all this pressure. But they are here and here for good. This home is now theirs. A tier three will get dropped, and this first set of racks looks to be claimed. 747 trying to swagger himself on forward, but he just gets knocked with the stun in silence. That Whoa. was the BKB, but by that point, it's just too damn late. Mason will easily shoot him down, and it's looking like Onyx, the fire, will continue to go, and they might claim just game number one. They're going to tier three tower right now. Shadow Fiend. No buyback, he just bought the full BKB, so 35 seconds with no Shadow Fin. It's gonna be so hard to defend. Change on Swindles, he's out. This one's over. Commanding performance out of the gate from Onyx here. 4 to 25. Wow. wow. Onyx looking stronger and stronger as day goes by. What is happening in that house over there? We need some pictures from Onyx house. It's some kind of magic, probably some Harry Potter magic actually. Whatever kind of magic he's casting over there, it's a working right now. Where can we go back to and say, like, really what happened? Laning phase. Again, it just went out so nicely here. Onyx